In this video, I want to formally introduce residuals. Now, I've mentioned residuals already um, because I mentioned them as part of deriving the least squares regression line uh, at the near the start of this uh, section uh, in the extension video. Now, the whole point of that was that I had to introduce residuals there because essentially the regression line minimizes the squares, the sum of the squares of the residuals. Now, you might go and be going, well, Jack, I haven't watched that video, so <laughs> what's, what is a residual? Um, okay, so here we have some points. Let's have some points. Okay, and let's draw a regression line. So let's a ruler. So let's say your regression line looks something like this. Now, of course, these don't have to be all of the points um, that have been plotted, but here are here they are. So each of these has uh, some coordinates. So let's say that this one is x1, y1. And this is x2, y2, this is x3, y3, and this is x4, y4. Now what we can do is we can work out the difference, so the vertical distance between the point and the line. OK, now the line is going to have some kind of equation. So y equals a plus bx would be my line. So this point here would have the coordinates x1 would be its x coordinate because it would have the same x coordinate as that one. The y coordinate can be calculated by substituting x1 into this. So the y-coordinate would be a plus b lots of x1. So a plus b lots of x1. So essentially what you can see this as is a line that is predicting values. And this is the predicted value of x1. Now that difference we refer to as the residual and we label it using the Greek letter epsilon. So this would be epsilon 1. And epsilon 1 is calculated by finding the y value of, well, y1 rather, the y value of the coordinate that has been, um, that has been spotted, that has been seen. OK, so that point there, um, I should say that has been, uh, collected, rather. So that's the y value of the point that's been collected. Then take away the predicted y value, which is a plus b x1. So that, in general, we can write epsilon i is equal to y i take away a plus b x i. So the residual is positive here because you've got a larger value take away a smaller value. However, when you work out the residual for this point, you've got y2 take away a plus b x2. And so you've got a smaller value take away a larger value. And so this one will be negative. So I know that epsilon 1 will be positive and epsilon 2 will be negative. And epsilon 3 will be positive and epsilon 4 will be negative. OK, because they're appearing above and below the line. So that is how we can calculate the residual for each of your data points. And what the least squares regression line does is it minimizes the sum of the squares of the residuals. So um, what we saw in the extension video uh, at the beginning of this section, or close to the beginning of the section, was that we were minimizing the sum of the squares 
of those residuals. Okay? And that's how we derived the least squares regression line. So, in uh, the exam, you may be asked to calculate a residual, um, and that may be part of a question. Uh, but there is one other fact that you should be aware of uh, with residuals, and that is what they all add up to. So if you wanted to find the sum of all of the residuals, and you'll forgive me for not bothering to write down i equals 1 to n. Um, I'm just going to take that as we understand that's the case. So the sum of all of the residuals would be equal to the sum of all of these. So yi take away a plus bxi. Now... What we can do is we can split this summation up and we can write that as the sum of all of the y's, yi's. Then we've got take away the sum of all of the a's. And then we've got take away the sum of all of the bxi's. So if you've met summation and series as part of core pure, already, then you should be um, relatively confident on me being able to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is I can bring the A and the B outside of their respective summations because they have got nothing to do with I. So I equals 1 to N is not going to be affecting the A and the B values that are there. So I can write that as the sum of the yi's, take away a, lots of the sum of 1, take away b, lots of the sum of xi. Now, you should remember from summations and series that the sum of 1 is just n, because essentially you're adding up 1 n times. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, plus one n times. So that is precisely the same as n. Now, the a value here, I can replace with y bar take away b x bar. Now, why is that the case? Well, we saw this previously in the extension video. I derived that in the extension video. The alternative, uh, if you are thinking, OK, right, well, I don't want to have to go back to the uh, extension video if I haven't watched it is because if you know what the the line is y equals a plus bx then you do know that the regression line goes through the mean point so that means that y bar must be equal to a plus bx bar because it goes through that mean point and then you can rearrange that by subtracting bx bar from both sides to get that. OK, so if you prefer, you can just see it that way. So I can replace the a with y bar take away bx bar. So we've got the sum of the yi's take away y bar take away bx bar times n take away b times the sum of xi. Now, don't worry, you won't have to replicate this in the exam. Okay, This is uh, to derive uh, a very useful result that we should know. So we have the sum of the yi's. Take away y bar times n. Now, what is y bar? Well, y bar is the sum of all the y's divided by n. You add up all the y's, divide by n. So I'm multiplying that by n. So that's just going to give me the sum of all the yi's. And then we've got take away a minus, so that'd be plus b times by x bar times n. Well, x bar is the sum of all the x's divided by n. 
So when I multiply that by n, I just get the sum of x i. So we get that. So we've got the sum of the y i's, take away the sum of the y i's, uh, plus b times the sum of the x i's, take away b times the sum of the x i's. So it is zero. So you get the important result that the sum of the residuals will always be equal to zero. And that can, has been proved there. OK, so that is what a residual is. This is how you calculate it. Oh. And we have the particularly useful result that the sum of the residuals is always equal to zero.